My dear friends, we stand on Awabakal land. Uh, we stand uh, in uh, the nations of the world's oldest continuing cultures. We pay our respects uh, to the uh, enduring connection to the land, the waters, the skies of the First Nations of this country. Uh, and we pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander cultures. Jesus said, love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. You will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, has been revealed as a light to the nations. So let us bring our darkness to his light confessing our sins together in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our maker and our judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us, strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
our special prayer for today. God of compassion, keep before us the love you have revealed in your Son, who prayed even for his enemies. In our words and deeds, help us to be like him, through whom we pray, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Please be seated for our readings. Genesis chapter 45, verses 3 to 11 and 15. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither ploughing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall, hear, shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks and herds and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them, and after that his brothers talked with him. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. morning's psalm is 37 verses 1 to 11 and 40 to 41. Do not vie with the wicked or envy those that do wrong, for they will soon wither like the grass and fade away like the green leaf. Trust in the Lord and do good, and you shall dwell in the land and feed in safe pastures. Let the Lord be your delight and he will grant you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him, and he will act. He will make your righteousness shine as clear as the light, and your innocence as the noonday. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not be vexed when someone prospers, when they put their evil purposes to work. Let go of anger and abandon wrath, let not, not envy move you to do evil, for the wicked shall be cut down, and those who wait for the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the ungodly shall be no more. You will look for them in their place, but they will not be found. But the meek shall possess the land, and enjoy the abundance of peace. Deliverance for the righteous shall come from the Lord. He is their strength in time of trouble. The Lord will help them and deliver them. He will save them from the ungodly and deliver them because they come to him for refuge.
1 Corinthians 15, chapters 35 to 50. But someone will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as you sow, what you, and as for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps of wheat or of some grain. But God gives it a body as he, dis, he, as he has chosen, and so each kind of seed its own body. Not all flesh is alike, but there is one flesh for human beings, another for animals, another for birds, and another for fish. There are both heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly one is one thing, and that of the earth is another. There is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. Indeed, star differs from star in glory. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonour, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a physical body, it is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. But it's not the spiritual that is first, but the physical and then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, man of dust. The second man is from heaven, as was the man of dust. So are those who are of the dust, and as is the man of heaven. So are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. So what I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. For the word of God. Thanks be to God. Now, Emily, Emily and William, um, we're thinking today, and you know, we've been thinking these last few Sundays about the kindness that Jesus asks us to show to people. Um, and uh, today, uh, we particularly think um, that Jesus told us um, not just to be kind to the people who do stuff for us, so like, you know, mummy and daddy and nan and pop and grandmas uh, and, and all the people who do lovely, lovely things to us, for, for us, Jesus told us to be kind to everybody, um, ev even if they haven't been kind to us first, uh, still what we do as followers of Jesus is show that kindness. Um, so I suggest uh, you've got uh, some lovely pretend fruit uh, to share with each other. You've got some lovely pretend cups of tea to give to each other. Um, I, I suggest uh, you might pretend to be um, you know, kindly giving food to people who are hungry and you know, a lovely pretend cup of tea uh, to people who are thirsty uh, as, we, as we continue our service this morning. Friends, I invite you to stand or sit as you're able. We're going to sing together a new commandment I give to you.
The Lord be with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be ever acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. You've perhaps known uh, in your life uh, someone who ha has, has a mental tally book, uh, you know, r running at all times. Uh, they, you know, they keep track of and they rehearse the, you know, the, the wrongs done to them. Uh, and, and some of those are very real hurts. Uh, and some of them perhaps are, are more in their perception uh, than in the perception of others. Uh, and this, you know, the, this mental tally book, you know, is, is always, uh, you know, ticking up and up and up. Uh, and those of you who, uh, you know, that, that's bringing recognition, you know, you, you can, you, you've, you've met someone like that, you've, uh, you know, known someone like that, uh, you'll know it doesn't make for a happy life, does it? <laughs> it doesn't make... Uh, for a happy heart. Uh, but it's so difficult, uh, isn't it? Uh, and um, it's really interesting, uh, this, uh, the reading from Genesis this morning about Joseph and his brothers. And it's, it's so easy for us as Christians, uh, and of course, when, when we are the person who has not been wronged, uh, it's so easy uh, for us uh, to, to, to misunderstand and to misspeak when it comes to forgiveness. In the story of Joseph, it's not that his brothers go to him and say, look, Everything's turned out fine. You should forgive us now. Yeah, that, that's not what happens at all because that's not of the nature of forgiveness. It's only ever for 
the wronged person to, to in themselves manage to go on a journey uh, where uh, they are finally able uh, to let go of the hurt that has been done to them, uh, not, not necessarily for the sake of the one who has wronged them, uh, but for the sake of, of their own heart, their own spirit. In the time in which Jesus lived and the culture in which he lived, uh, like many human cultures, um, reciprocity was key. Uh, you know, and, and that's where uh, you know, we, we hear those incredible things in Paul's letters. Uh, you know, when, when Paul is reprimanding uh, some churches for, um, for continuing uh, to be like the culture around them in their laws of reciprocity. Uh, a, a, a wealthy patron uh, in the time in which Jesus lived would uh, invite you know, a, a whole lot of different people uh, to dinner. Uh, but according to what a person could do for them, according to the social standing of the guest, uh, would, would alter uh, the food they were given even. You know, can, can you imagine... <laughs> We as church um, sort of saying to people who come, um, you know, um, you can have uh, the nice biscuits at morning tea uh, and you have to have the stale biscuits at morning tea. I mean, it's just, just extraordinary. But this was the culture uh, in which Jesus lived. Paul reprimands the church uh, because he says, Jesus said specifically about this, don't just look after the people who look after you. Uh, instead, you are to be a different community. Uh, you are to be a community who gives without expecting in return. Now, on the one hand, we're doing much better at that <laughs> than, than perhaps some of the churches in Jesus' time. And on the other hand, perhaps we still have a journey to undertake. Too often in the church, uh, we have been guilty of assessing the worthiness of someone uh, before uh, giving to them food when they are hungry, uh, clothing when they are cold, uh, shelter uh, when they have no safe place to call home. Jesus unequivocally uh, says that culture is not to be our culture. Uh, it is not for us to... Uh, assess the worthiness or unworthiness uh, or, of someone. Instead, it is for us uh, to simply give. However, you knew there'd be a however. Um, <laughs> it's interesting, isn't it? Um, there's this balance. Um, how, how do we How do we hold lightly that which we have? How do we have generous hearts? Uh, at the same time, we, without uh, becoming ourselves, you know, a, a victim of abuse, uh, uh, you know, accepting standards of behaviour which, which we simply should not accept uh, for ourselves and for others. And the turning the other cheek uh, is very interesting. Uh, now... It is, a, it is a tale that goes around among clergy and biblical scholars uh, so often that it's now impossible to know whether or not it is true. But, um, you know, be bear in mind um, the standards of, you know, 
ritual cleanliness and, and standards of, of sort of, you know, this guest would get a stale broken biscuit and, and this guest would, you know, get the, the fresh assed vovo. You know, the, this kind of you know, hierarchical thinking. Um, so apparently, uh, when striking someone upon the cheek as a you know, ritual insult, um, the back of the hand was used. And clergy and biblical scholars tell one another that to turn the other cheek wasn't to invite endless abuse, uh, but instead, that, so, so if you, I should have practiced, but <laughs> if, you, if you strike somebody with the back of the hand on, on, on one cheek, and then they turn the other, you sort of can't, you know, you're not going to bend your hand around to, to strike with the back of the hand on the other cheek, so that it, in order to strike them again, you must strike them with the front of the hand, which, which has a very different cultural meaning. And, I mean, you know, I, I say, you know, we don't, we don't hit any, you know, you, you'll say to your kid, you know, um, you know, don't, we don't hit our sister on the leg, and then you correct yourself, and they're like, we, we don't hit anyone anywhere, you know, don't, don't, you know, stop hitting her on the leg, but also don't hit anyone, please, you know. And, um, but to invite a strike with the flat of the hand uh, was within this system to be recognised as an equal, so, so not to, to just keep inviting the abuse, but to, to stand up and say, you know, I, I am your equal, you know, s strike me, but, you know, if, if that's what you're doing, but recognise my humanity, uh, recognise our, our shared personhood, uh, recognise, you know, that, that I'm not the dirt underneath your feet, I am a person like you. It's very difficult and, you know, I, I can speak for hours upon hours and I'm not going to. I don't think you'll be relieved. Um, <clears throat> when we talk about sin within the church, for many centuries there, sin was spoken about by theologians uh, and the theologians were for the most part men uh, and, and for the most part were men without uh, significant family responsibilities. So in the church, we started talking about sin in very particular ways, you know, as being unstinting giving. But I don't think that's a full enough understanding. Uh, you know, if sin is that which takes us away from God... We all of us know, uh, and those of us with heavy, caring responsibilities for others, you know, be they uh, a parent, you know, as, as, as they age or, or get unwell, be those uh, people with caring responsibilities for young children in their lives, you know, those who, who are uh, the, the carer, um, you know, both both absolutely, you know, literal definition, carer uh, of their spouse uh, and, and also those who just bear that constant, you know, weight of awareness of care. Unstinting giving, when there is nothing left in the tank, uh, can itself take us away from God, can it not? Few of us, I hope, are regularly getting hit in the face. <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I, I do hope. Um, many of us have to give and give and give and give, you know, e even when it feels like there's nothing left. I wonder if the analogy in the striking of the cheek is about, you know, and it's all very well, you know, especially over the pandemic, and, and those of you who are 
caregivers for somebody in your house, you know, and, and people say, oh, self-care. And you're like, well, that's all very well, but, you know, I'm looking after them 24-7, you know, and I don't know what, you know, if, if, I, if I even go down to the shops, I don't know what I'm coming back to. It, you know, it, it's, it's that constant weight. So it's all very well saying, oh, self-care, self-care, but the responsibility doesn't go anywhere, you know, especially when it's, you know, someone you love with all your heart, you know, your uh, spouses or, or parents or children. The responsibility doesn't go anywhere. But I wonder if there are ways for us to stand up and, and to, to have expectations of how, how we will be treated. Not, not that, you know, the caring responsibility ends, not that, uh, you know, not, not that um, the, the work is any easier, uh, but just that we too are a human, with human needs, uh, with our own full personhood. Uh, we too are a beloved child of God. Uh, and even uh, when we're giving and giving and giving, there should be something left of us to receive from God, uh, that abundant love, um, you know, not, not just you know, lightly leveled across the top of the flower um, measure, uh, but you know, pressed down more and more and more. Uh, that is the abundant love given to us. Friends, we're going to uh, affirm as ours now the faith of the church. I do invite you to, to stand or sit as you're able. Um, I also, we're, we're trying to get the right balance between ventilation and absolutely freezing. Uh, but do remember there are some blankies in the foyer there uh, if you need a nice crocheted rug uh, for, for the space that you're in. Let's affirm the faith together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, light, light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Now, as we pray this morning, um, I'd like Emily and Emily and William, if you could, to come and help me.
this, isn't it gorgeous? So it's a signature bear, uh, and, and all of, of Phoebe's uh, family and friends uh, will, will sign it, you know, in addition to, to all the ways in which, um, to, to all the ways in which this service has to be not quite what we'd want it to be. Of course, you know, yesterday, uh, Phoebe's church-going grandmother had to do a rapid antigen test and, you know, it was negative, but she's symptomatic. You, you know, it's just um, the, the poor family. So, um, yeah, yeah. Um, but, but hopefully uh, we'll get to sort of wave to them on, on, on their way in, uh, you know, but still socially distanced. Jesus said, Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. We pray together. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same, Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. I invite you to stand for the greeting of peace. We are the body of Christ. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Our offertory hymn this morning, In Christ There Is No East or West. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours 
always and everywhere, mighty creator, ever living God, we give you thanks and praise for our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. You anointed him as Messiah, the light of the nations, and revealed him as the hope of all who thirst for righteousness and peace. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing together. God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine. We pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. us, we are confident to pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body. 
for we all share in the one bread. So the gifts of God for the people of God come. The body of Christ keep you in eternal life. My friends, I invite you to remain seated as we sing together 
Make me a channel of your peace. We pray, loving God, for those on our hearts at this time, for those who are sick, despairing or bereaved. We give thanks for the faithful departed. We pray that we, with them, with all your saints, will be brought to a glorious resurrection and the fulfilment of your kingdom. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. God of the nations, we thank you for nourishing us with this holy sacrament. Guide us by your presence that we may bring your light to those who dwell in darkness and establish your justice in the earth. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Well, friends, well done for enduring the masks as long as you have. Uh, From next week, as I said, they won't be compulsory. Uh, But of course, as a community, we absolutely support one another. Uh, There'll be some people who, uh, for their own sake, will continue to wear a mask. Uh, There'll be some people who, for the sake of of vulnerable ones in their life, will continue uh, to wear a mask so they don't bring anything home. Um, I I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. Um, I I don't know that QR um, QR codes are going to do much for us in this setting from now on, because of course, 
even when we have had exposures here, we're not close contacts because we're not spending more than four hours in a room without ventilation together. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very, um, very happy for us to, you know, to only use those uh, if, if we, you know, absolutely are, are desperate to do so. Um, in, in other you know, things changing, I'm, I'm delighted and, and thank uh, Gina especially very much uh, that we'll have morning tea together after uh, our service. Um, yep, yep. Um, so please do stay if you're, if you're able, uh, if you feel up to it, and, and if not this week, then, then hopefully uh, sometime in weeks to come. The other thing that will change back again is from next week, uh, we will do communion wine. We'll still use the little cups for the next few weeks just to look after one another, but I sort of thought it was worth not doing it until we don't have to wear the masks because, as some of you might know, juggling the bread and the mask and the little cup of wine, <laughs> yeah, it's just impossible. Um, but from next week, you know, you'll be able to take your mask off for communion, uh, have the bread, uh, receive a little cup of wine if you wish. The symbol of the common cup is, is so central uh, to us as Christians, and, and part of that is what we were talking about today, this idea that, you know, we don't say, you know, you get the stale arrow root and you get the Monte Carlo, uh, you know, fresh from the pack. Um, you know, and the common cup is sort of the central Christian symbol of that equality. But, I mean, my gosh, I'm nervous of it <laughs> at present. Um, and um, so after a few weeks of us just having the little cups, what we'll probably do is make the common cup available for those who desperately want to receive the communion wine in that way. And look, at most points in my life, that's been myself. Um, I, I was willing to bear a certain amount of risk on my behalf, you know, to, to receive the common cup. Um, but but I, I cannot imagine a future for us as a congregation where we don't give people the option, you know, where, where we don't say, you do what you need to do for the thriving of, of your soul and your body. You, you know, so uh, so be, be assured, uh, we'll, we'll make sure that, that there are options for people. It won't be, you know, you, you have to take the common cup and you have to just, you know, bear, bear that risk. Um, the, yeah, I think that's our notices. Do, do remember, um, if... A Sunday doesn't work out, or, you know, the other possibility is, you know, the Sunday service is longer, which is tough for those with caring responsibilities at home, um, um, and and also the the Sunday service exposes us to more people, doesn't it? Because we all love to be here together. Uh, there is a Tuesday morning service at 11 a.m., uh, which which could be perfect for some folk. Uh, it could be perfect for, for some folk from time to time. Uh, it's, it's a possibility for you as you uh, navigate uh, this next phase in our lives. Now, where's the birthday girl? There you are. <laughs> we, we give thanks to God for you, Jan. You, you, uh, you, you, know, you, you rise to every challenge. <laughs> and, and we are so blessed to have you among us. Uh, let's sing happy birthday to Jan, shall we? Happy birthday to you, to Jesus be true. May God bless and keep you your whole lifetime through. <laughs> Him. Hey! Hooray! <laughs> <laughs> have a have a wonderful day on Friday, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, have have just a, a gorgeous day. Um, well, um, shall we stand? We'll ask for God's blessing on us all as we go and, and on the ones we, we love who can't be with us today. 
uh, and then we, we, after our blessing, we sing the Amen together. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest to you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you, the ones you love and pray for, today and always. And now I invite you to let your, your inner Welsh person out uh, and to sing with, with enormous abandon, and can it be that I should gain? <laughs> <laughs> 